Hey everyone, it's Doug at PickUpTheGuitar.com. Welcome to our third video on PowerTab Editor. And basically what I'd like to do is um, sort of make up a song as I go. And I figure that's probably the best way to show off all the features of the software and, you know, how to do everything. Um, for those of you who have used other types of composing software before, um, this is probably going to be a breeze. Um, I do recommend that you have at least a little bit of music background in order to do this. Like, if you don't know a whole note from a half note, then you're probably going to have trouble. Um, but otherwise, if you have a little bit of experience, uh, you're going to be just fine with this. And, you know, you can kind of figure it out muddling through. But um, with this video, I hope to basically explain all of this stuff to you so you know how to do everything in the software. So there's a lot of things to get to um, by default. Um, PowerTab Editor, you know, does a lot of things by default that you're going to want to be aware of and possibly change depending on what you want to do. So the first thing I always do when I open a brand new file is come over here and increase the distance between the tab lines here. And I actually talked about this in my last video, my second video in the series. And then I come over here to the font and I'm going to change this to bold and size 9 for both the chord name as well as the tablature numbers. And all of this is just to make it a little bit easier to read. By default the font size to me is a little bit small. And um, for example, I kind of have trouble telling a six from a five and things like that. So it just helps for readability. Um, another thing by default I'll point out now is that the time signature is four, four. So that's default. Um, the treble clef is also default. You can actually switch into a bass clef and you can actually put in bass tablature here as well. But for now, we're only going to worry about guitar tablature. Um, down here toward the bottom left is where all of your different types of notes are. So you see you have whole note, half note, quarter note, and so on. All the way down to those crazy 64th notes. Um, you really don't see those too often. And then there's other icons for things like uh, a dotted note here. You know, um, all of your basic music notational needs are down here, basically. So back up here, what I'm going to do is actually start punching in some music. So the way that you do this is you have a blue cursor, and you can use the arrow key or the mouse to click on which string you want to use. And basically, you're just going to use the number keys on your keyboard to type in what fret on that string you want to play. So for example, if I'm on the fifth string here, which is an A, and I push three, it's going to give me a C. That's the note that's found on the third fret of the A string. And you can see it put uh, the note in there automatically for us. And um, that's another thing to note is that you can only punch in notes in the software by using the tablature. Notice I can't really click on the grand staff. So this is actually the only way to put in notes, which is OK. Um, you know, most guitarists today are familiar with tablature more so than the grand staff anyway. So it kind of comes naturally that, you know, you want to punch notes in this way. So um, one thing I wanted to mention, you can see by default, power tab chooses eighth notes. Um, but again, down here is where you would change that to whatever kind of note you want. So I'm going to stick with eighth notes just for a second here and just punch in some more notes. And uh, all I'm punching in here is the C major scale. So they're all eighth notes. Looks good. You can see it automatically groups them together appropriately. Um, now, one thing at this point that you do have to do by yourself is come up here to this icon, the music bar. And you can punch in different kinds of uh, bars. For example, there's repeat bars. Um, in this case, we just want the default one that's selected here, which is just your measure separator. And it um, puts that in there, and now you have a brand new measure to work with. So you do have to know to do that by, um, you know, on your own, I guess. So again, since the default time signature was 4-4, I knew that once I added in four beats total, I have to throw in one of these bars. Um, it's not going to cause any issues. Um, you'll still be able to play back the file and save it and everything. Um, there is an error checker that we're going to see in a minute here that it'll throw an error at you and just let you know that, you know, this measure is over or under by so many beats. Um, but really, it's just for neatness. You know, you're, you're supposed to separate your measures appropriately based on the time signature that you choose. So um, I guess at this point, I'm just going to fill in the rest of this line here. I'll come down here and choose quarter notes um, just to make this go a little bit faster. Oops, we're going to stay in the key of C here. So 
just kind of picking some notes at random. This is not planned at all. I don't have anything written down, so bear with me here. We'll switch to some half notes. All right, and maybe one more measure here at the end. Just uh, We'll get four measures in here. It's a pretty good number. All right, just to finish it off there. So once you've filled in a line, um, this actually looks like it's justified already, but there's another icon up here. Okay, there we go. So this justify icon basically spreads out all of the notes and all of the content that you've added to the line. It spreads it out nicely so it looks professional. Um, so you don't really have to worry about making it look neat as you're punching things in. All right, so we have a complete line now. What we can actually do if we want is come up here to the play button. And if we click play from beginning, Okay, so it sounds pretty ridiculous, but um, it works. So another thing by default that I want to point out now that we've played the song, um, you can see it says guitar one here. So by default, Power Tab Editor gives you one guitar to work with. You can actually add up to seven different guitars, um, and they don't even have to be guitars. You, can, you actually have a whole list of different sounds that you can choose from. So that's another thing by default. I guess I'll go into the guitar setup screen here real quick. Uh, while I'm talking about this. So this screen is where you can actually add more instruments. And by default, this is what it looks like. You're in standard tuning, of course. Um, here's the MIDI. This is where you can actually change how it sounds. So by default, you have a nylon acoustic guitar. We could select steel string acoustic guitar, and it will sound different. I'll play it back in a second. You can also add a description here. By default, it's untitled. So for example, I could put in, you know, guitar one or you know, you can call it whatever you want. It's just so you know what it is. And hit OK. So let's play it again now that we've changed the sound to a steel string. Okay, so you can tell there's clearly a difference in how it sounds. And um, you can kind of play with all the different MIDIs that are available to, you know, get the sound that you want. Um, so by default, I'll mention again that if you go over here to the tempo marker, by default, the tempo is 120 beats per minute. And it doesn't actually show it by default, which is kind of strange. But if you hit OK, it will actually put it in there. So just know that by default, even though it's not there, the beats per minute is 120, unless you go in here and change it to some other number. So, you know, we could change it to, I don't know, 100, just slow it down a little bit. And then when you play it back, you'll hear that it's a little bit slower now. All right, so let's show off, I guess, one more type of sound. Because um, there's basically, you know, acoustic guitars, you have nylon and steel strings. Um, there's also electric guitars. So jazz and clean, I think, actually sound the same, even though they have different descriptions. Um, they actually sound the same, but don't quote me on that. Um, I think overdriven and distortion guitar also both sound the same, even though they have two different names. But let's choose the distorted guitar just so we hear how it sounds. And there you go. So I think I'm going to wrap it up now for this video. Um, there's still a lot, a lot, a lot more to get to. So keep uh, looking out for our, our next videos. Um, I'll try to get these up a little bit quicker. And uh, thanks for watching.